the mysteries of the cosmos have captured the attention of humanity. Among these enigmas, few are as captivating as the phenomena involving unidentified objects seen in proximity to celestial bodies. One such remarkable event unfolded when a huge unidentified object was allegedly captured near the Sun through NASA's HelioViewer, a solar observatory tool. NASA's HelioViewer is a state-of-the-art solar observatory that allows scientists and enthusiasts to explore the Sun's activity in unprecedented detail. Through high-resolution images and videos, the Helio Viewer provides insights into solar phenomena, including solar flares, prominences, and coronal mass ejections. This sophisticated tool inadvertently turned its gaze towards an unexpected and intriguing subject, an unidentified object in the vicinity of the Sun. In the realm of astronomical mysteries, the sighting of an unidentified object near the Sun adds another layer of intrigue. The footage purportedly captured by the Helio viewer shows an unidentified object hovering to the right of the Sun. The object's close proximity to the Sun and its apparent size raise questions about its nature, origin, and its ability to withstand the Sun's intense heat and radiation. As with many sightings, explanations range from natural phenomena to advanced encounters. Oddly enough, this isn't the first time that an object of this size has been observed close to the Sun. The idea of an unidentified object venturing close to the Sun holds a certain allure for those fascinated by the possibility of advanced life. The Sun, as the source of energy for our solar system, might also be an attractive point of interest for advanced civilizations seeking to harness its immense power. If such civilizations exist, their curiosity about celestial bodies like the Sun could lead them to venture into uncharted territory, potentially revealing themselves through anomalous sightings like the one captured by the Helio viewer. The encounter with an unidentified object near the Sun raises several challenges and controversies. One major challenge is the extreme conditions near the Sun, including intense heat and radiation. Earth-based technology, as we understand it today, would struggle to withstand such conditions. The theoretical capabilities of an advanced civilization capable of navigating such a hostile environment would surpass our current understanding of engineering and physics. The scientific community is no stranger to these sightings and claims. However, the challenge lies in verifying and validating such claims using rigorous scientific methods. Without concrete evidence, claims of these sightings can be met with skepticism. In the case of this object that was captured near the Sun, Rigorous scrutiny and examination are essential to determine whether the observed phenomenon is indeed a genuine unidentified object or an artifact of data processing. The sighting of this object triggers questions about the potential interactions between advanced civilizations and celestial bodies. If civilizations possess the capability to approach and study stars like our Sun, it suggests an astounding level of technological mastery. Furthermore, such an encounter could hold implications for our own understanding of space exploration, the search for advanced intelligence, and our place in the cosmos. Mysterious sightings, whether near the Sun or within our own atmosphere, fuel curiosity and inspire exploration. They challenge our perceptions of reality, encouraging us to question the limits of human ingenuity and the possibility of encountering life beyond Earth. While skepticism remains a critical aspect of scientific inquiry, these mysteries ignite a spark that compels us to delve deeper into the cosmos, seeking answers to questions that transcend the boundaries of our planet. NASA has recently made the decision to entrust a group of 16 individuals with the task of conducting an in-depth, comprehensive analysis of unidentified anomalous phenomena. These UAPs refer to any observed occurrences in the sky that cannot be easily classified as conventional aircraft or as familiar natural phenomena. By assembling this independent study team, NASA is seeking to enrich our understanding of these perplexing phenomena and shed light on their mysterious nature. With a duration of nine months, the primary objective of the independent study team is to establish a strong foundation for future research on the enigmatic subject of unidentified aerial phenomena, benefiting not only NASA, but also other relevant organizations. In order to accomplish this, 
the team will undertake a comprehensive exploration of the various sources of data, including data collected by civilian government entities, commercial sources, and other related sources. Their main focus will be on analyzing this data to gain valuable insights into the nature of UAPs. Furthermore, the team will present a detailed roadmap outlining the recommended approach for the agency to effectively analyze UAP data in the future. This in-depth analysis will contribute significantly to advancing our understanding of UAPs and facilitate the formulation of informed strategies for UAP data analysis within the agency and beyond. In this study, the primary concentration will be on examining unclassified data exclusively. The research team aims to provide a comprehensive and detailed report encompassing their discoveries, which will be made available to the general public in the middle of 2023. According to Thomas Zerbuchen, the Associate Administrator of the Science Mission Directorate at NASA headquarters in Washington, the essence of NASA lies in the exploration of the mysterious realms of space and the atmosphere. Zerbuchen emphasizes the importance of comprehending the data we possess regarding unidentified anomalous phenomena, as it plays a crucial role in enabling us to draw scientific conclusions about the events occurring in our skies. He stresses that data serves as the language of scientists, allowing them to unravel the inexplicable and shed light on the unknown. This understanding is fundamental to expanding our knowledge and furthering scientific research in these areas. Unidentified anomalous phenomena have captured the attention of both national security and air safety authorities, as they pose potential risks and implications. This study aligns with one of NASA's key objectives, which is to ensure the safety and security of aircraft operations. However, in the absence of a comprehensive dataset, it becomes exceedingly challenging to validate or provide explanations for any observed anomalous events. Therefore, the primary focus of this study is to provide NASA with valuable insights into the types of data that could be collected in the future. This will enable the scientific community to effectively analyze and understand the true nature of these unidentified aerial phenomena. By acquiring this knowledge, NASA can make informed decisions that enhance aircraft safety measures and contribute to a broader understanding of these mysterious occurrences. The individual who is leading and coordinating the study at NASA is Daniel Evans, who holds the position of Assistant Deputy Associate Administrator for research within NASA's Science Mission Directorate. As previously communicated, the team responsible for conducting the study is composed of independent experts, with David Spergel, the president of the Simons Foundation, serving as the chair. This comprehensive and in-depth study aims to enhance our understanding and knowledge in the specific field under investigation. According to Evans, NASA has assembled a highly esteemed group consisting of renowned scientists, experts in data analysis and artificial intelligence, as well as aerospace safety specialists. The primary goal of this diverse team is to provide guidance on how to effectively utilize the power of scientific knowledge and data in the study of unidentified aerial phenomena. Priority will be given to ensuring that the principles of transparency, openness, and scientific integrity, which are inherent to NASA, are upheld. It is worth noting that the findings and conclusions derived from this initiative will be made public, allowing the wider community access to the information. The intention behind this release is to align with NASA's commitment to transparency and universally accepted scientific principles. The NASA study team, dedicated to investigating unidentified anomalous phenomena, consists of a group of experts working independently. David Spergel, an accomplished scientist and leader in the field of astrophysics, has been chosen to lead NASA's independent investigation on unidentified anomalous phenomena. Currently, he holds the esteemed position of president at the renowned Simons Foundation, where he was also the founding director of the highly esteemed Flatiron Institute for Computational Astrophysics. Spergel's wide-ranging interests encompass a broad spectrum within the field of astrophysics, spanning from the exploration for exoplanets and nearby stars to the profound study of the universe's shape. With his extensive expertise, he has successfully measured crucial aspects such as the age, shape, and composition of the universe. Additionally, 
Spergel has played a pivotal role in establishing the standard model of cosmology, solidifying his reputation as a prominent figure in the scientific community. Recognized for his remarkable contributions, he has been honored with the MacArthur Fellowship, also known as the Genius Fellowship, a prestigious recognition bestowed upon remarkable individuals. Anna Maria Berea is an esteemed associate professor specializing in the field of computational and data science. Based at the prestigious George Mason University in Fairfax, Virginia, she is recognized for her extensive research in the emerging field of communication within intricate biological systems. Additionally, she holds key roles as a research affiliate at the SETI Institute in Mountain View, California, and a research investigator at the Blue Marble Space Institute of Science in Seattle. Dr. Berea's primary research interests lie in the intersection of data science and astrobiology. Her focus revolves around analyzing and understanding the communication mechanisms that arise within complex living systems, particularly in relation to biosignatures and technosignatures. To achieve this, she employs a diverse array of computational methods, unveiling fundamental patterns and insights locked within vast sets of data. Federica Bianco, an accomplished joint professor at the University of Delaware, holds positions in the Department of Physics and Astrophysics, as well as the Biden School of Public Policy and Administration. She is also a senior scientist at the Multicity Urban Observatory. As a highly skilled cross-disciplinary scientist, she applies data science techniques to unravel the mysteries of the universe while simultaneously seeking innovative solutions to urban-based challenges on our own planet. Furthermore, Federica Bianco serves as the deputy project scientist for the Vera C. Rubin Observatory. This groundbreaking observatory is set to launch the Legacy Survey of Space and Time in 2023, specifically focusing on studying the nighttime sky in the Southern Hemisphere. With this ambitious mission, the observatory aims to unveil new insights about galaxies and stars. Unidentified objects have long been associated with intrigue and mystery, often invoking questions about their origins, motives, and interactions with celestial bodies. Among the myriad of cosmic wonders, the Sun holds a particular fascination for enthusiasts and researchers alike. The notion that these objects could be interested in the Sun is a topic that merges science fiction with scientific inquiry, prompting a deeper exploration into the potential reasons behind this enigmatic interest. The Sun stands as the powerhouse of our solar system, radiating immense amounts of energy into space. Advanced civilizations, if they exist, might recognize the Sun's potential as a virtually unlimited energy source. The allure of tapping into this cosmic reservoir of energy could drive unidentified objects to venture close to the Sun, perhaps to harness its power for their technological needs. These objects might possess advanced technologies that enable them to extract energy from the Sun's abundant radiative output. The Sun's energy could be converted into a usable form to power their propulsion systems, communication devices, or other advanced systems. Such capabilities could allow unidentified objects to recharge or replenish their energy reserves while in close proximity to the Sun. The Sun is a dynamic celestial body with a complex interplay of magnetic fields, solar flares, and coronal mass ejections. These phenomena could be of great interest to extraterrestrial entities seeking to understand the Sun's behavior, study solar dynamics, or exploit unique opportunities presented by these events. The intense gravitational field and energy emissions near the Sun might offer unconventional travel routes through space-time. These objects, equipped with advanced propulsion systems, could potentially exploit these phenomena to traverse vast interstellar distances more efficiently, using the Sun's gravitational influence as a cosmic slingshot or tapping into its energy to bend space-time. The United States government is well known for conducting a wide variety of strange research experiments. Many of these are described as being on the cutting edge of scientific advancement, and this has led to incredible breakthroughs in medicine, computer technology, agriculture, and a wide variety of additional fields used across the military. However, oddly enough, there seems to be a recently declassified government experiment that was approved for release back in 2003, surrounding the training of psychic soldiers and enhancements to the brain known as the Gateway Process Experience Experiments. The declassified document, titled 
Analysis and Assessment of Gateway Process, seems to be a written memo between a United States Army researcher at the CIA and sent to a U.S. Army operational commander located out of Fort Meade. The subject of the memo seems to have been the analysis surrounding the legitimacy of the Gateway Process study, as the researcher writes the following in an opening statement. You tasked me to provide an assessment of the Gateway experience in terms of its mechanics and ultimate practicality. Most likely, the United States government was unaware of what the Gateway process really entailed, and so sent an independent researcher to the experimentation areas to undergo the process and learn if there was any legitimacy to the study in the first place for continued funding. However, within the first paragraph of the document, the researcher makes a special note to include that the Gateway process was a technique designed by Itzhak Bentov, stating the following. Based on conversations with a physician who took the Gateway training with me, I had recourse to the biomedical models developed by Itzhak Bentov to obtain information concerning the physical aspects of the process. For those that are not aware, Itzhak Bentov was a leading Israeli researcher, known for his incredible contributions in the creation of patents for the steerable heart catheter, ECG electrodes, pacemaker leads, and a number of other patents that would help to form the Boston Scientific Meditech Corporation. Itzhak Bentov was also known for his contributions to the Israeli Defense Force, being one of the lead inventors on the Israeli missile project, as well as many other improvised weapons. What many are not aware of surrounding the Israeli inventor was his devout belief and following in the mystical side of consciousness, which would lead to his primary contributions to the gateway process experiment. John Abel, Bentov's fellow business partner, was once quoted as saying the following, I was interested in how the brain worked and actually attached electrodes to his head, which were connected to a function generator in which he could change the wave shape and the power and learned about how the brain interprets these different frequencies. The document then goes into the breakdown of what the gateway process holds, with the first explanation from the researcher being in regards to the human body's natural frequencies of the brain and the frequency following response. According to the study, a form of enlightenment can be triggered in a person's mind when both hemispheres of the brain begin operating at the same frequency, allowing them to communicate without any form of distraction and leading to a heightened state of focus. Although it requires a number of different techniques to reach this state, the main contributing factor in the study was a device that relied on the human body's natural frequency response. In the document, the researcher details the following statement. To achieve synchronization of brain hemispheres, the hemisync technique takes advantage of a phenomenon known as the frequency following response, which means that if a subject hears a sound produced at a frequency which emulates one of those associated with the operation of the human brain, the brain will try to mimic the same frequency pattern by adjusting its brainwave output. Therefore, if the subject is in a fully awake state, but hears sound frequencies which approximates brainwave output at the theta level, the subject's brain will endeavor to alter its brainwave pattern from the normal beta to the theta level. Additional techniques for reaching a sinking of the hemispheres include assisted hypnosis from a psychologist, as well as techniques that match transcendental meditation practices, with a note stating that gurus who have practiced transcendental meditation practices for 20 years have the ability to reach a hemisphere sink for up to 15 minutes at a time without any form of assistance technologically. According to the document, this training lasts about seven days before a person is capable of reaching a hemisphere sync frequency with the assistance of technology and is capable of furthering the study with tasks related to skill in the gateway process experience techniques. The first task that is given to the trained subject is that of problem solving. When under the influence of synced hemispheres, a subject can call upon its higher self for assistance in solving problems, with the higher self representing a form of unfiltered subconscious that can remember everything ever taught to the subject and use it for perfect creativity and logical deduction. The document details that this ability can be used to solve personal difficulties, technical problems in the realm of physics, mathematics, science, practical administrative problems, and so on. In a way, turning the brain into an instantly responding and calculating computer that can analyze and process information at a much faster rate than normal. The second task that is given to the trained subject is referred to as an energy bar tool. The subject is then required to visualize and focus different forms of energy throughout its body, 
being fed by the universe to allow the body to undergo rapid healing processes. This could mean that with increased focus on the mind, the brain can suddenly consciousness force autonomous physical processes, such as healing and heart rate with ease. The third, and usually described as the final task for most of the subjects, is referred to by the researchers of the gateway process experience as remote viewing, although is not similar to traditional remote viewing noted by psychics, to see distant locations using astral projection. Instead, the technique requires the subject to visualize and access parts of their memory, and begin to holographically portray the memory in such a way as to allow the person to relive memories with perfect total recall. The researcher writing the document then notes that this is typically where the training and ability of most of the subjects end up, and that less than 5% of the participants are able to move past these skills into the realm of impossible to understand psychic abilities. The document then details the following. The ability known as Focus 21, the future. The last and most advanced of all the focus states associated with the gateway training program involves movement outside of the boundaries of time-space, as in Focus 15, but with attention to discovering the future rather than the past. The individual who has achieved this state has reached a truly advanced level. The research document then goes on to state that the ability to travel into the future is accomplished only after a subject is able to master an out-of-body experience. This occurs when the natural brain frequency of the hemispheres are synced and then reach a matching frequency with the background electromagnetic phenomenon of the universe, allowing consciousness to imprint itself and begin to leave its body and journey out into the rest of the world. Picking up electromagnetic information similar to how a radio captures radio waves and how our eyes capture photons to imprint an image of our surrounding environment. Once this information begins to pour into the consciousness of a person, they can then begin the process of astral projection that will allow them to speed up time and look into the future, as well as deep within the past at moments that their memory would not be able to access. There is a sound, rational basis in terms of physical science parameters for considering the gateway process experience to be plausible in terms of its essential objectives of heightened brain activity. Additionally, the document seems to hold several pages involving a new scientific theory as to the formation of the universe as a massive three-dimensional toroid, helping to explain why certain parts of the universe seem to be moving at faster speeds compared to others, as evidence of this donut shape moving the mass of galaxies back down and around to the other side of the universe. The document then ends with the researcher stating that the gateway process experience should be provided to all members of the organization for heightened mental ability and goes on to suggest a 12-step plan as to how to provide the gateway training to all members of the organization. The memo then states that the training could open up members of the gateway process to be attacked by intelligent energy beings if the boundaries of time and space are continually surpassed. The document states the following. Subjects must be intellectually prepared to react to possible encounters with intelligent, non-corporal energy forms when time-space boundaries are exceeded. With additional statements that perhaps practical use of the gateway process experience could be used to gather information from such entities and the universal consciousness. The discovery of giant skeletons in the United States has long captivated the imagination of people around the world. Tales of enormous humanoid remains, often referred to as giant skeletons, have fueled speculation about a hidden chapter of human history. According to various sources such as newspaper articles, scientific journals, historical documents and photographs, over the course of two centuries in North America, more than a thousand skeletal remains of individuals who measured at least seven feet in height have been discovered. These accounts reach from the east to west coasts of the United States, and describe anomalies such as skulls with elongated shapes, excessive teeth and jawbones that dwarfed the finder's face. The information that has been amassed on these discoveries is well documented. During the 1800s, it was reported that enormous skeletal remains were found in the burial mounds of North America. According to the reports, the skeletons were described as having a length of 7 to 8 feet, while some purported discoveries reaching 9 to 11 feet. Additionally, these skeletons were noted to have enormous skulls and lower jawbones. Early records from local historians 
frequently documented these remains, as evident in the following excerpt from Cass County, Michigan. Dr. Bonine had discovered a 13 feet high mound with a diameter of the base approximately 50 feet and unusual skeletons. According to Dr. Bonine, one of the male skeletons, currently in his possession, had a well-preserved large femur, which indicates that the owner was likely seven feet tall or more. Antiquarian scholars have documented the anthropology of ancient tall people found in prehistoric mounds. An article from the American Antiquarian, Volume 2, Number 1, provides an account from Chillicothe, Illinois. It is a commonly known fact that during the 19th and early 20th centuries, newspapers would often report on the discovery of large-scale skeletons found across the United States. An article from the News Herald on January 3, 1895, based in Portsmouth, Ohio, is a prime example of this trend. It's reported that bridge carpenters discovered an enormous skeleton while conducting excavation work. The finding occurred near Portsmouth, about three miles east of the area. The skeleton measured an astounding seven feet and four inches in size. During the 1880s, the Eastern Mound Division of the Smithsonian Institute found many huge skeletons while destroying Native American burial mounds in North America. The Bureau of Ethnology's 12th annual report provides evidence of various large skeletons that were discovered by Smithsonian agents. Near the original surface of the mound, lying at full length upon its back, was one of the largest skeletons discovered by the Bureau agents. The length as proved by actual measurement being between 7 and 8 feet. Located at the heart of Mound 11, and buried approximately three feet deep, is a vault measuring eight feet in length and three feet in width. Within this vault was discovered a complete human skeleton, measuring an impressive seven feet in length. This particular specimen's height was determined to be roughly seven and a half feet when it was alive. Researchers arrived at this estimation based on the measurement distance between the skull base and toe bones, which came out to be about seven feet three inches. During the 1900s, archaeologists took a renewed interest in ancient giants. With the help of Charles Snow, William S. Webb from the University of Kentucky was able to confirm that the distinct skeletal characteristics observed by previous sources belonged to the Adena Mound building culture. Webb and Snow's study of Adena's anthropology was documented in two volumes of the Adena people. The first volume was published in 1945 and the second was co-written with Raymond S. Baby and published in 1957. The forehead is typically highly noticeable and is situated beneath quite prominent brow ridges. The size of the jawbone's distinctive bulge is moderately projected. Generally, cheekbones are both large and noticeably prominent, extending forward and to the side. This information comes from a publication by Webb, Snow and Baby in 1957. Moreover, in their analysis, Webb, Snow and Baby observed a distinct bony chin structure, which is characterized by bilateral prominences leading to an extensive chin width. Although today known as the Maryland Science Center, one of the oldest scientific institutions of the United States, dating all the way back to 1797, the Maryland Science Center used to go by the name of the Maryland Academy of Sciences several decades ago. Dated back to the 25th of November, back in 1897, the Maryland Academy of Sciences was reported to have been in the possession of several skeletons of a lost Native American tribe of giants. Though the skeletons were not nearly as tall as many of the other claimed findings of previous years, the Academy of Sciences claimed that their collection featured three full skeletons of seven-foot-tall Native American giants believed to have been a part of an entire tribe of gigantic Native people. The Red-Headed Giants of Lovelock Cave the next Native American legend we will be discussing surrounds the historical existence of cannibals in a small cave on the outskirts of Humboldt Sink, Nevada. The place is called Lovelock Cave and is about 150 feet long. The legend claims that the cave was once inhabited by 10 feet tall and red-haired giants who harmed and ate humans from the neighboring communities. The giants known as Siteka were deeply feared by the Paiute Indians. The Paiute Indians eliminated the giants by trapping them inside the caves and funneling smoke inside until they passed away. 
Lovelock Cave in which they lived has since been a huge archaeological site and home to the discovery of over 10,000 artifacts. The University of California and its anthropologists went in and discovered tons of unique artifacts, like baskets, finely crafted sage brushes, knives and other tools. They also found human bones, some of which were missing the marrow that had been dug out. This increased the truth of cannibalistic speculations and that the humans living within the cave ate other humans. Researchers claimed that most of the human bones remained untouched and the bones that were missing marrow and sported knife marks might have been done out of necessity or famine and not a regular diet. The anthropologist Llewellyn L. Loud was in charge of the Lovelock Cave expeditions when he and his team discovered nearly 10,000 different artifacts. It took him many years of research and work before he could completely publish a full report of the findings. That being said, none of his findings directly proved the existence of 10 feet tall beings and any human bones found were of the regular size for the time period. The cave was not easy to explore as it suffered from a collapse in roughly the year 440 BC, which led to the destruction of numerous access points. This likely influenced the residents of the cave to leave and find a home elsewhere. The new residents of the cave were mainly bats that, over time, caused a large pileup of guano to cover the ground and all the artifacts. The cave has since been the site of many expeditions from various facilities and research centers, but none have yet to uncover any scientific proof of 10 feet tall giants. Sacsayhuaman in Peru. The word Sacsayhuaman comes from the Quechua language, translates roughly to royal eagle or more literally the place where the hawk was satiated. It is thought that it gained this name due to the high presence of these birds in the area where the structure was built. Sacsayhuaman is an architectural complex in the city of Cusco, Peru. The building was erected by the Incas in the 15th century under the 9th Incan leader Pashacuti, Inca, Yupanqui and his successors. A project as massive as this necessitated the hard work of at least 20,000 labourers, which were divided by the thousands and given jobs such as quarrying duties, digging trenches and laying the foundations of this huge monument. This fortress is the largest built by the Incas. It was constructed on an elevated rocky head facing the northern marshy ground outside the Incan capital, Cusco. The Incas were known as master stonemasons, and their abilities are demonstrated wonderfully in this building. It was built using dry stone walls and boulders that were fit tightly together using mortar. Although they did not use anything to cement the stones together, their mechanics ensured that the building stood strong and stable. The huge blocks of stone making up the temple were shaped using nothing but harder rocks and bronze tools. Based on the marks left on these stones, researchers believe they were mostly pounded into shape rather than being cut. The blocks must have been moved around using ropes, levers, poles and earth-made ramps. This is evident due to the indentations that remained on the stones even after they were fit into place in the building. It was built to withstand earthquakes and the damage from such natural disasters through the interlocking of the blocks and sloped walls which maximized protection. It is definitely apparent that this proved to be successful, as the building has survived over 500 years of earthquakes. The area also contains a variety of buildings, such as residential spaces, towers, holy places, warehouses, roadways, and aqueducts. The positioning and placing of the area is similar to other Incan locations, like the Machu Picchu. It stands as a testament to the Incas' skills in architecture and their ability to create a structure that worked in harmony with the natural landscape of the place. It is simply incredible to see the remains of history and the magnificent skills and abilities of those who lived before us, and to be able to witness the architectural pursuits that were accomplished without the use of modern technology and resources. Tesla want to make humanoid robots. A robot uprising is part of many sci-fi and dystopia classics, though with the robots that are being developed, from Alexa to more complex AI, some are worried that it will not be long before this terrifying trope 
is part of our lives. This is not helped by the 2021 announcement that Tesla is working on a Teslabot, a humanoid robot that Elon Musk claims could have a working prototype by 2022. Musk has said that the Teslabot will take care of chores and jobs that us humans just are not fans of. As he continued to describe the robot, he said the AI technology that goes into the Teslabot will be the same used in the cars, though this humanoid will be decked out with an intricate camera setup to keep an eye on what is going on in the world. A frankly, quite unnerving design is going to be about 1.7 meters tall. Musk has said that the robot is intended to be friendly. While in the world of AI there may not be definite answers nor a great deal of certainty, the intended does not fill us with a great deal of reassurance. The purpose of the robots is to take off of our hands the jobs that we just do not want to do. These were described by Musk as those that are dangerous, repetitive and boring. The idea is that any physical work will eventually become optional, thanks to the Tesla bot. A function that looks as though it could be featured is the ability for the robot to understand simple instructions, such as picking up groceries for you. Musk hopes that the Tesla bot could even fill the labor gap though others are concerned about jobs being taken away from humans in need of work. Of course, the Tesla cars themselves have not come without criticism, with many questioning the capabilities of the self-driving features, following the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration claiming to have identified 11 crashes being the fault of the Tesla cars hitting emergency services vehicles that were parked in the road. One incident resulted in a fatality and in total 17 injuries. Despite these incidents, Musk maintains his view that the Tesla self-driving system is safer than humans on the road. Whatever your personal opinion is, I am sure you can understand the concerns of those wary about the Tesla AI in cars, never mind the same system being used to create humanoids allegedly capable of taking jobs over for us. The world of AI is controversial as it is. Though the work of Tesla and Elon Musk himself has caused an even greater divide, with some cheering on the scientific advancements and others wary of the economic and social implications. Scientists have found a new strange metal that behaves in ways they cannot quite understand. A recent discovery by a team of scientists depicts a new strange metal that behaves in a way that has never been recorded before. The metal was discovered in a material where the electrical charge was not being carried by electrons, but by an entity they are calling Cooper pairs. These strange metals are not completely new, but were discovered nearly 30 years ago and have troubled scientists for decades as they do not act in the same ways that better understood metals like copper and silver do. For example, scientists have a great understanding of metals like silver, brass and copper because they act in a typical way. These typical metals are common conductors of electricity and change when they are heated or cooled, whereas the new strange metals are not behaving in the same way but following a different set of rules that differ from the understanding that we currently have of metals and electricity. Simply put, electrons belong to the fermions class of particles and these new Cooper pairs belong to the bosons class. The boson system operates differently from the fermion and moves similarly to water molecules. Therefore, these Cooper pairs have a wave-like entity. To understand these metals, scientists have tried to apply the same mathematical formulas used to learn about black holes, among other tests, to determine how and why these strange metals behave in the way they do. Unfortunately, there is yet to be a clear answer. At the moment, there is still not much knowledge about the strange metals, and scientists are working hard to uncover some more answers, but it may be some time before we gain more knowledge. Scientists discover a mysterious shadow zone in the ocean. There is an area of ocean containing what is referred to as the most ancient water on Earth, and the reason for this is as interesting as it is confusing. Deep below the surface of the North Pacific Ocean lies a patch of water that has remained stagnant and unmoved for over a thousand years. It's thought that the last time these waters came into contact with the Earth's atmosphere was as far back as the time of the Vikings, Mayans and ancient Romans. In an area called the Shadow Zone, the oldest waters on Earth are trapped at a depth of 1.2 miles. 
The age of the water has been confirmed using carbon dating, but the reasons for it staying there are a little less clear. With barely any vertical movement, the ocean water in that shadow zone has been suspended for centuries. After examining previous research on these waters, researchers attempted anew to gain a better understanding of what was happening and began to study what others had not – the seabed. This revealed that the depth and shape of the ocean floor also played a part in why the waters had stayed there, unmoved for so long. As it turned out, the rough topography and distance from geothermal heat sources protected the water in that area from the movement caused by water currents. The level at which the shadow zone sits means that it is affected neither by surface currents nor by deeper currents that travel through the rest of the Pacific Ocean. The Pacific Ocean evidently holds a lot more than we might ever imagine, from meteorite fragments from another solar system to water that has not moved nor changed since ancient times from thousands of years ago. A missing scrap of a Dead Sea Scroll mysteriously ended up in Montana. Back on the topic of the Dead Sea, a missing piece of a Dead Sea Scroll was inexplicably discovered in a home in Montana. Unfortunately, the entire message of the scroll may not be able to be interpreted due to rips in the papyrus. Scrolls made of papyrus were common far before the 1500s, with their first speculated uses dating back to BCE. Researchers have been able to translate some of what is on the fragment, its size being slightly larger than a postage stamp. The most obvious and readable things are instructions for which items to send and not to send. For what reason exactly, we have no idea. Yet any note would be mystifying after accidentally travelling from Israel to Montana. In fact, it's a miracle that a natural, biodegradable material has lasted for such a long time. Perhaps next time something ends up in a strange place, we can accurately predict where it came from. Mystery of strange sonar blip heard near Titanic wreckage is finally solved. We all know of the tragedy of the Titanic, the famous unsinkable ship that sunk. Throughout the years, historians and researchers alike have been down to the shipwreck, diving and exploring. Paul Henry Nagiole has seen the Titanic shipwreck 30 times, one of which has become particularly noteworthy. In 1998, Nagiole recorded what has been dubbed a sonar blip, close by to the wreckage of the Titanic. It has been decades and we remained clueless as to what this strange blip was, and so it remained unidentified, a mystery. There were plenty of possibilities as to what might have been behind this blip. Many theorised that it could have been another shipwreck or even some sort of geological feature. Decades later, we finally have the answer. It was a 2022 trip to the shipwreck that Nagiole and his research team at last uncovered the origin of this blip. The team found a deep-sea reef filled with marine life. This was a volcanic formation, and it has been found to be home to plenty of different sea life. This news is so fresh that we don't know exactly what it is that has been discovered. With plenty of images, videos, and general footage to search through, this discovery is far from complete. During their dive, the researchers spotted sponges, corals, different fish and lobsters, amongst other creatures. The basalt ridge, where all this wonderful sea life was found, has been named the Nagiole Fanning Ridge, for the time being. Named after Nagiole and Oshin Fanning, who was the mission specialist during this expedition. Researchers hope to be able to observe how the different organisms interact, are distributed and what kinds of creatures can thrive in this sort of space. By looking at this and then forming comparisons to other underwater ecosystems, we should be able to learn a lot more about deep sea environments. It's important to research these ecosystems now, not solely out of interest, but also in the sense of preservation, as we know the climate crisis can have a negative impact upon these systems. But what do you make of these recent discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.